folks, it's Matt here from Floor Designs here with another great video. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's kind of interesting and it's something that I haven't seen before or at least seen much of. Uh, I have seen Make Anything on YouTube uh, do springies is what he calls them, but to me they, they don't do it justice. So what we're going to talk about, and you may have guessed it, is slinkies. So it was a couple of years ago, uh, I was at my teaching job and a student of mine who was pretty interested in 3D printing at the time brought up the fact that, uh, that he wanted to 3D print a slinky or he thought about 3D printing a slinky. And I thought that was a great idea and I told him that I would take a crack at it. So uh, I jumped on to Inventor and I did a couple iterations. I believe it took two or three, maybe, maybe four iterations to get to this point right here. Now this is not the full height of it. Uh, I think my cat broke it along the way. Uh, and you can see that it has deformed in which it won't stand up straight. And, um, and it did actually go downstairs. But my goal now is I no longer have that file and I wanna do it again. And I wanna improve upon it this time. So you can see this is my previous design here and how I did it uh, was using the spiraling tool in, uh, in Inventor and Autodesk Inventor and I left just enough clearance so that these layers could print on top of each other without any supports and then just break away as you take it off of the bed. Uh, so my goal this time is to try to clean it up and you can see there's some, you know, some burrs and some other stuff. So we're going to see if we can get this to print a little bit cleaner and then we'll get a final shot. I'll get a couple of videos of it printing. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump on to Inventor and see what I can come up with. I'll, we'll be back. So what I started to do here on Inventor is I started a sketch along my XY plane and uh, what I did was I took a measurement of the previous uh, slinky that I had and what I did was I tried to mimic it in such a way that I can replicate it but at the same time make it better. So I measured out uh, my three inch inner diameter and I divided that by two off of that center point, 1.5. And then I measured uh, the thickness of one of these individual strands and I wanted to go just a little bit thicker this time. So that's what I did. I bumped it up uh, from 0.12 to 0.15. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to try to use our coil tool. Let's see if I can get a shot of our coil tool. So I'm going to try to use the coil tool and after messing around with it a little bit, I'll get back with you guys. So after messing around with our coil tool a little bit, uh, this is what I was actually left with. I had to add an additional axis line when I created uh, my coil so I had a point to pivot around and then I also adjusted this just a little bit it was uh, 0.15 and the original size was 0.1 uh, and it just looked a little bit too large so I bumped it down to 0.12 uh, as you can see this is our finished result our coil settings let me drag this over uh, our coil settings I ended up doing a four and a half height. I might adjust that. I might make it a little bit higher. We'll see. And I ended up with 34 revolution at that height. And, uh, and then this was our end result. So you can see if we look at it from the side that there are some small gaps. Uh, this guy right here. These are gaps in between each one of those layers. and as it coils around, it should just break apart. Now we'll see uh, how these clearances are, if it's too small or you know maybe too large. But what I wanna do now is I wanna taper off the ends right here and down at the bottom right here because I wanna give it, it'll just give it a much better look and it will sit much neater. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and do that right now. Perfect. So as you can see, we are left with a basically parallel top uh, and parallel bottom. And the way I went about doing that, as you can see, this guy kind of tapers off as it spins around, going from thinner to thicker as it comes around. And we'll see how that first layer lays, um, but hopefully it won't be an issue. Like I said, the way I went about doing that is pretty simple. 
all I did was uh, start a new sketch on this YZ plane and went in on that sketch and simply went straight across with a line from this edge across and then just closed off that shape. Did the same thing down below here and then whenever I went to go extrude it, um, all I did was do a distance through all and uh, in a direction symmetric both ways. So it was going both ways through all, uh, obviously doing a cut, not a add. And you can see it kind of takes off that bit there that sticks up uh, and makes it nice and neat all the way across. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and export this and bring it into Cura and I will be right back. So here you'll see I have loaded up the Slinky and Cura. Um, you might be able to see the white in between our layers. That should be good uh, so that we don't need any support. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this puppy up 90 and you'll see it sitting nicely. Now this is gonna be printed, uh, you might be able to see, on my Ender 3 Pro, on one of my Ender 3 Pros, and I am gonna go ahead, uh, let me check my filament and see what I wanna print it in. I decided I'm gonna go ahead uh, and do this first test print in some pink Gizmo Dorks PLA. Um, we'll see how it turns out and then depending I'll move up to maybe some PLA or, or I'm sorry some PETG or some ABS. So let's go ahead and look through our settings here. Uh, I'm going to keep it at our general 0.2 millimeter layer height. I am going to bump up uh, the infill probably, prob probably to 100% you know just because and um, I don't need support. I don't need any bed adhesion hopefully. Um, and we are going to go ahead and slice this guy up. We'll see how long it says. Naturally, 17 hours. Great. So we're going to go ahead and go to our print preview. And I will do a little bit of zooming in as we look at it. Now, uh, as I look at this, I'm starting to get pretty worried at the thickness of each block. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead back into Cura and revert back to our original 0.1 by 0.1 box. So give me just a moment here. So I got the old Slinky and the new Slinky both uploaded here into Cura. Can you tell which one is the new one? It, it's kind of hard to tell, but this one here is the new one on the left side here. Uh, and it actually has, so this one has 32 revolutions in that four and a half inches. This one actually has 40 revolutions in that uh, 4.5 inches. So there is quite a difference there. I'm not sure if I will have a lot of difference in my print time. Uh, let me go ahead and see. We were at 1740 before. Now we are up to, oh, we are way down, 14 hours, 42 minutes. So um, the smaller obviously had a big impact on it, and that's awesome. That's exactly what I want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and get this loaded up onto my SD card and start printing. Also, check us out on Facebook, Polar Designs 3D, as we're always uploading new stuff and, uh, and trying to bring as much cool content to you guys as possible. The extruder is just about up to temp, so our print should be starting at any time. I will try to check back a little bit later and take another video and then of course get the end result for you guys. All right, folks, we are back. It is a new day and you can see the print is complete. The slinky is complete uh, in that nice Gizmo Dorks pink that I have, hot pink. You can see the print took 12 hours and 53 minutes to complete, and that was at 100% infill, 20% uh, 
or um, 20, uh, 20 millimeter layer height and I think it was the 50 millimeter per second print speed. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Now luckily with my Ender 3 Pro, it should be as easy as one, two, three, and the top is off. I am gonna go ahead and see if I can start separating some of these layers and I will get back to you. I decided to set this up as I remove this because it is pretty gosh darn satisfying. And you can see we have something that looks pretty like a slinky. I don't know. What do you think? Now, I'm not sure if this one's going to make it down the stairs, but the only way to figure out is if we try it. So we are set up pretty precariously here, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can give it a try. I don't know about you, but to me, This looks like a working slinky. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. You like it? You like this girl? Right? These steps are a little bit wide, so it does get caught up as you go on them. Let me give it a couple more tries. Oh my god. This is a 3D printed slinky. Well, there you have it folks. A cat approved 3D printed slinky that actually goes downstairs. So I wanted to say just how much fun uh, I had with this project. Uh, I never thought, you know, designing and printing a slinky could be so enjoyable, but I guess it's the little things in life, you know? Uh, it, maybe it brings you back to childhood, you know, I'm not really sure what it is, but I will say that I had great successes with this one, this being my original print, uh, and even great successes with other prints, like this smaller version, which uh, was just a scaled down version of the original one, also performs very well. And I'm still even printing more of them as we speak. Uh, I'm printing, I usually don't print with ABS uh, and I don't have an enclosure, so uh, I'm doing this one right now. Uh, but I'm printing another one in ABS just to kind of see how that guy turns out as well. So as always folks, thank you so much for watching. Stay creative, my friends.